Hey, well, welcome everybody. We're glad. Wow. Lots of people here tonight. This is great. <coughs> We're happy you're here. Um, it's our Board of Education meeting for Thursday, April 19th. And um, it's always nice to see so many people here. Um, I would like to um, appoint Mr. Ott as our pro tem and let me the treasurer for tonight. Let me tell you, Penny Rucker, who is our treasurer, is at OSBO conference this week and she's representing Beaver Creek Schools. She is speaking on behalf of Beaver Creek Schools at one of the sessions. So it's always nice when we have somebody from our school district being asked to speak at a conference. So we're excited for her. So that's why she's not here. And that's why Mr. Otten Oh, yep, I will gladly. Yeah, you might explain to them what that means. Uh, basically, um, I'll be filling in uh, for the treasurer tonight. So if we mess up, I blame her since she's not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So you ready for roll call? So we're ready for roll call. Okay, Miss Arnold. Here. Mrs. Hunt. Here. Mr. Morrison. Here. Mrs. Vergano. Here. And Mr. Taylor. Here. You have a form. Okay. Good job.
two standing ovations. They were amazing. For them to represent our school district. We are so proud of all of you and thank you for coming tonight. This is amazing. Mr. Hurley, okay. absolutely outstanding job. <laughs> debate events that debate philosophy or current events, 
We have speech events, one which Mr. Otten saw where it's students speaking completely off the cuff. We have interpretive acting events, and then we've got scripted events like Shweta does where it's a very traditional form of oratory. But fundamentally, whether it's interpretation, debate, extemp, or oratory, the reason we coach, the reason that Coach Chamberlain, myself, and our other colleagues do this is because we strongly feel that the skills this activity teaches are one of the strongest skill sets that doesn't get assigned a letter grade in the curriculum. Because even though they don't get an A or a B or anything like this, the communication skills, the ability to critically analyze and then communicate that uh, is useful obviously in high school, college, career, but especially these days just in society in general. So we have a team of about 40 students, and we've been around that for a little while. Uh, I was on the team myself back in the day, as were two of our other uh, coaches, and then Coach Chamberlain competed up in Michigan, and we were very lucky to have her join on as well more recently. Uh, we compete under the Ohio High School Speech and Debate Association and under the NSDA, the National Speech and Debate Association. The national organization was founded in 1925. For as little as people have heard about us, it's one of the oldest academic activities in the nation and one of the largest <coughs> competitions every year is the NSBA National Tournament this year in Florida. Um, a lot, over 6,500 schools participate in it, including most of the vocal students from the Majority Stone and Douglas High School down in Florida participate on their speech and debate program. In Ohio, we at Beaver Creek compete mostly in our local area. We, our competition is the usual names, Oakwood, Centerville, Mason, and the Dayton, Cincinnati area. The Beaver Creek team tends to also go a lot up to Akron, Toledo, Cleveland, and Youngstown, because that is where the majority of the good competition is. Transportation is a major part of what we need and what our budget goes towards, because to be competitive in the state, we don't only want to see the people who are close to us, but we want to see the best in the state. But enough about in general. <laughs> Beaver Creek Speech and Debate, since 2012, when this current structure of the team began, has had over 75 state qualifiers, seven state finalists, 12 national qualifiers, and now, in our sixth year of running it, a state champion. Uh, Shweta's specific event is original oratory. It's one of our hardest events, not because of the complexity of the rules, but because of the simplicity of them. The basic rules are write a 10-minute speech, memorize it, and deliver it. And then to win, it has to be better than other people who are doing that same thing. And for four years, Swift has been writing speeches that are personal or academic or informative. Um, but to kind of see how personal and how much she loves this topic, I'm going to get, let her get up here and just show you the speech. Forget Wendy and don't even get me started on Tiger Lily. Wrong kind of Indian. <laughs> no. When I was seven, Peter was the man for me. Cuter than Shawn Mendes, could teach me how to fly. And if I was his girlfriend, I would never have to grow up. Never have to turn 18. You know, the age parents, colleges, even the government defines as the moment you become an adult. In our society, 18 means responsibilities, obligations, maturity. Ooh. I mean, really, can you blame me for preferring Neverland? Unfortunately, growing up is a painful yet inevitable process. And according to the 2017 book, The Vanishing American Adult, the age of adulthood is getting delayed further and further in the lives of millennials. But to most of us, 18 is still that threshold. The proverbial, push the baby bird out of the nest and hope to God it flies, moment of our life. However, by allowing a single age, and an increasingly antiquated one at that, to define the exact moment we grow up, shortens a decades-long process into a single heartbeat. And in doing so, burdens teenagers with responsibilities that they are biologically and socially underprepared to handle. So today, let's fly to Neverland to learn why 18 is so important in our society. Next, we'll explore why being 18 doesn't always equate to being an adult. Before finally flying back home 
to learn that growing up at your own pace, on your own time, is okay. In math or science, 18 is about as irrelevant as you can get. It's not a prime, it's not a Fibonacci. The 18th element of the periodic table is argon, I think. <laughs> Logically, 18 is not a heavyweight. But socially, it's been the Muhammad Ali of milestones since the 1950s. In post-World War II America, adulthood was defined by milestones, the first of which was finishing your education. And according to a 2013 Slate article, after the 1950s, for most people, this meant finishing high school and going on to college, at or around the age of 18. But it was more than just school that made 18 important. It was also the politics. The Selective Service Act of 1942 lowered the draft age from 21 to 18, allowing the government to begin drafting men who, at the time, were still ineligible to vote. Protests against the draft came to a head during the Vietnam War giving rise to the familiar chant, old enough to fight, old enough to vote. Due to persistent public pressure, the American government finally passed the 26th Amendment in 1971. Serving your country and voting. Two of the most important civic duties anybody can do for their nation became accessible at the same time you were attending your high school prom and getting your high school diploma. Due to the precedent set by the education system, the military, and voting, we have come to define 18 as a threshold for many other adult activities as well. No, not those kind of adult activities. I'm talking about moving out, taking your shot at Powerball, tying the knot if you want to. 18 is the age of independence in our culture. And really, what more is there to being an adult than having your freedom? Well, there's responsibilities. There's taxes. Legally binding contracts, jury duty, you just about to graduate and move out of your parents' house, you could send someone to jail or, you know, be sent to jail yourself. If you believe that an 18-year-old would never be mature enough to make decisions of the same caliber as, say, a 36-year-old, you're absolutely right. We're not always ready, as biologically or socially as we should be. Now, my love for Peter Pan was as real as seven-year-old love could get. Granted, back then I defined love as A, does he have red hair, and B, would marrying him let me live at Walt Disney World. Ten years later, I would define love as A, does he look like Jon Snow, and B, is he Jon Snow? <laughs> as you can obviously tell, Age is no guaranteed sign of maturity. And one reason for this lies in biology. According to the 2010 NPR segment, the teen brain, it's just not ready yet. The frontal lobes, the area of the brain responsible for rational decision making and planning, are underdeveloped in teenagers until they are well into their 20s. So, say you were called for jury duty as an 18 year old. Chances are, you would make a quicker judgment than the senior citizen sitting next to you. <coughs> Chances are you would do a lot of things quicker than the senior citizen sitting next to you. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is that speed is not always a good thing, especially when it comes to making judgments. But it's also about more than what's going on inside your head. According to a 2010 New York Times article, kids in our generation are taking longer and longer to reach adulthood. And this is because our society is no longer built on that five-step get out of school, leave home, get a job, get married, have kids, all before 30 lifestyle that has been the routine for so many generations. Our social climate has changed. So that time period between 18 and early 20s isn't where you complete steps one, two, and three. This is where we begin getting ready for the expectations and the responsibilities that characterize adulthood. And to be honest, this makes sense. We grow up being told that we have 18 years to get our futures figured out. But the fact is, very few of us actually do. Sure, I may say that I want to be a doctor, but only because my parents told me to. <laughs> well, some teenagers have full on dream boards about their future careers and why they chose them. Most of us don't. And part of the blame lies with our education system, with its overwhelming focus on test scores and lack of job exploration. 
but our inability to answer things like the job question by the time that we are 18 years old is emblematic of a much bigger reality that we must all come to face with. The teenagers are simply underprepared to meet such high expectations in such a short amount of time. Today, being an 18 year old is really more like being an adult on training wheels. You never know the exact moment you'll find your balance on a bike or in life. All you really know is that it takes a few bruised knees and elbows and more than a couple of retries. Of course, there needs to be a precedent for the legal age of majority. And by all means, keep 18 as that age. But age of majority does not and should not coincide with the moment someone becomes an adult. Because as biology and society have shown us, there is no clear cut beginning for adulthood. But for the sake of generalization, Let's say that there was. Let's say that we want to keep 18 as that general deadline. That would entail revising our entire society to teach kids how to be grown-ups. Plenty of classes and intervention sessions on how to handle work, finance, family life, law. It's called childhood for a reason, people. Growing up is a process, and we can't rush it. And although it may take society years to realize this, my senior year of high school has taught me that it is very important that future 18-year-olds learn to do so. Because now, I know what it feels like to have expectations thrown at you from so many different directions. From parents, friends, coaches, colleges, teachers, yourself, I know what it feels like to be asked to write essays upon essays about who you are and to look at yourself thinking, I don't know who I am. I know what it feels like to be trying your hardest to meet those deadlines, meet those due dates, meet those expectations, but still feel like you're drowning because you are not ready. But I also know what it feels like to look at myself in the mirror and be proud of coming through everything stronger. Scarred, but better. Because the fact is, I can't escape to Neverland, but that doesn't mean adulthood has to happen anytime soon. Not for me, and not for any other teenager out there. Because we still have the rest of high school, college. So my message to all the high schoolers is take your time. Enjoy the ups and downs of life, and one day we will be ready for the expectations, the responsibilities, the jury duty, and the taxes. And if that day is not today, or tomorrow, or even a year in the future, that's okay. Because it will come in its own sweet time. And for now, that's enough. For me, and I hope for you too. We couldn't send her to Utah that year. We didn't have enough money to just send her. But she's also a four-time qualifier to the state tournament. Uh, since they instituted the bid system where you can pre-qualify the states, she did that all three years as well. Uh, she is one of the strongest competitors in our district and has been since she was a freshman. But for some weird reason, including losing her voice her junior year at the state tournament, never actually advanced to out rounds at the state tournament until her senior year. And even then, and she might hate me telling this part, of the top 24 students who made it to the outruns, she was 24. She, she snuck in there and then just destroyed the competition in the quarterfinal, semifinal, and state final round, uh, defeating former state finalists and champions uh, all along the way. She is Beaver Creek's first speech and debate state champion at the state level since 1992. Uh, under the tutelage of Becky Harding and Dave Yoder, Beaver Creek had a really strong time from 88 to 92 uh, with about five state finalists and champions, and Shweta has put us back on that map. Uh, we'll be showcasing Shweta, and I'm going to take this opportunity to do a little spiel like Sean did too. We'll be showcasing Shweta and our other state finalists and very strong competitors from our team on April 30th at the Ferguson Lecture Hall at 6 p.m. 
It's open to the community, and I hope people come to watch both our debate events and our speech events to see really the best of what we do and the breadth of what we do in terms of traditional oratory and everything else. Uh, on behalf of Shweta, Coach Chamberlain, and myself, really thank you, uh, Mr. Otten, for coming to our January tournament and then also inviting us here after you heard about everything. Uh, you'll be invited again next year, and everyone on the board and anyone in the committee who wants to, and anyone in the community who wants to come uh, in January to our invitational is welcome to. Uh, I'm proud of our team and the system we've established, and I really hope with opportunities like this to really broadcast what we do to the greater community and integrate the team more with the Beaver Creek community. All right, thank you. Thanks. I got chills, and uh, uh, um, I sit here thinking about, as a school district, how proud we are to have you as a student. And I look in the back of the room at your mom and dad, and I would like to honor them, and thank them for what they've done. <laughs> So you can't just come to a board meeting and not get anything. So we've got this really nice piece of paper. <laughs> I'm going to ask that the board come up because I'd like to get a picture with you, your coaches, and the board so that we can get you on our website. So if you can come up here to the middle. That was unbelievable. I need to let my kids listen to that. So this is for you. We're going to have the board come up and the coaches if you guys want to get around. And then mom, dad, we're gonna get you in too. Go ahead. It's in your head. Go ahead, please. He made it. Even one of them. I heard this. Good kids. 
resurfacing of Beaver Creek High School. Uh, why? Why now? Um, the field is 10 years old. It was put in in 2008 by Field Turf. Um, it had an eight-year guarantee with it. Um, average lifespan of those fields is typically eight to 10 years. So um, we've gotten that out of it. We've had some fiber failure. Um, UV has been tough on the grass fibers. They've broken down and you've seen the field for the past three, four, five years, you, you've noticed that. Um, one of the big issues or concerns with the field is safety. Um, they have a test called GMAX testing, which um, they do every year on it. And the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has set a limit at 200 to be the highest. Anything over 200 um, creates a great risk and is thought to significantly increase the risk of serious injury. So that's kind of a, if you're at 200, you shouldn't have kids out there playing. Um, in 2015, our GMAX was at 149. In 2016, it was at 160, so it increased 11. 2017, we were at 178, so it increased 80. So we are approaching that 200 mark, so it's, it's time um, to correct that situation. Um, with the track, we have not done, it was put in the same time as the football field, and we have not done anything with it. We have some damage to the edges that we need to address, and we need to uh, recover. So, um, this project, uh, the football field there, we have a contract with you're aware, you are aware of with Miami Valley Hospital. Um, uh, we have just recently re upped that for five years. That pays us $130,000 each year for five years for a total of $650,000 that we know is coming into us. That money will be used to fund this project. Um, steps that we've already taken, we met with our engineer, um, Kleinagers has a group that specializes in field turf. Uh, we had them come out, uh, look at the field with us and make sure that we were on, on track on basically uh, what needed to happen. Um, they recommended that we meet with um, three major vendors in the area. Um, the Moats Group, Field Turf, and AstroTurf. So we had a committee um, that met with them. Brad Pompas, the athletic director of high school, was very involved in this. He involved coaches as we worked through the process as well. Um, so we met with each of those groups on site, walked the track and the football field, so they had a good idea of what we had and what we needed. Um, we request, requested proposals from each group. Um, and we asked for basically a good, better, and best proposal from each so we could kind of see where we were at and what we could afford. Um, after we got all those proposals, the committee convened and we reviewed all of those. Um, we decided that per our budget and 
good, that the good versus better and best was, it was a good product. Um, and it's highly used in the area. So that's what we're recommending. Um, price difference between the three different companies, there was only about an 8% difference between the low and the high. And it's about a half a million dollar project. So that's, that's pretty tight numbers. Um, we are recommending a shock attenuation pad underneath, um, which helps with GMAX testing. Um, concussions are a big thing that is, we need to be very aware of that, and this, this shock pad will help with that. Um, another part of the process was working with others in the area, check with other athletic directors to see what they had to say about um, the field and um, what they've done. Uh, warranty, all of them provide an eight-year warranty. Um, purchasing, they all have met the uh, bid specifications either through um, a consortium or a co-op of some sort. So we don't need to write specs and put it out to bid. These numbers and proposals have already been out to bid. Uh, we are moving forward with a recommendation for the Moats Group, um, and that proposal is in your board book. Um, the product is a multi-use, uh, it's good for soccer, football, lacrosse, all those things that people do. Because depending on what you want to do, some people have a soccer field and they want it to be fast, so they do something a little different with the turf. So there's all those options out there. This is a good multi-use product. Um, the, another differentiator with the Moats Group is the service. Um, they are highly respected in the region. Um, and we have been using them at Beaver Creek City Schools for our yearly service on our existing field. They come out every summer, do our GMAX testing, uh, repair any seams or anything like that. So um, we are familiar with them, they're familiar with us. Um, Moats has over 34 fields in the area um, at high schools and also in colleges. Uh, and 34 of them are 24 7, which is the product that we're going with. So they are pretty much the exact same thing with what we have. Um, Alter, Bellbrook, Centerville, Chaminade Julian, Clinton Massey, Fairfield, Fairmont, Hamilton, Kings, Lebanon, Mason, Miami Valley, Miamisburg, Middletown, Northmont, Oakwood, Pickla, Spring Morrow, Stebbins. Trotwood Madison, Wayne, and Zenu all have this same thing. So it's, it's been proven, it's out there. Um, high points of their specific proposal, the turf replacing, the replacement, including the pad, comes over uh, just over $400,000. Um, the full service maintenance contract is $17,500, and again, that is, um, they come out every summer, do the GMAX testing for us, um, and make sure that the seams and everything, the fill, they rake it out to make sure it is maintained so we will get the 10 years out of it. Um, the track resurface comes in at $110,500. Uh, that will take care of the edge repairs, put two coats of um, structural spray on it and redo all the track markings. Total project costs $530,000, 600. Um, and again, this is offset through the Miami Valley contract. This will be through the TIPS program, so it's a co-op purchase again, so we don't have to go out to bid. Um, next step with approval of the resolution will be to enter into contract with the Moats Group. Um, we have a tentative start date of May 19th. It would be a six to eight week project, and we would be ready for football and soccer this fall. So, in a nutshell, any questions? Great presentation. All right. Yeah. Not a comment, not a question, but a comment. I certainly want to applaud you and your team uh, for recognizing that the uh, original product is showing its wear and tear. The safety of the students is extremely important. I think a wise decision to go with the Moats Group, as you, as you said very eloquently, they are well respected not only at the high school level and the college level, but even at the professional level. Uh, the, 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 the fact that the eight-year warranty uh, is, is, is phenomenal. The three-year warranty on the track, uh, that's excellent. I applaud you for the full service maintenance package, having the wisdom to move forward with that. 
the number of kids that use that facility, I'm a runner as I'm running up and drive, up and down Dayton Senior Road every single night. There are kids out there using that facility, uh, so that's what it's there for, for our kids, so that's phenomenal. I really appreciate you saying that it's not going to cost one penny of taxpayer dollars to fund this project. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate that. Um, the next item is an update on strategic planning, and you have a packet that was at your spot when you came in. I would just like to, yep, that's it. Um, I opened it up with a wordle that uh, Mr. Schwederman put together from kind of, I thought it was a great cover page. And uh, a wordle, if you're not familiar with the wordle, the words that are the largest in there were the words that were most said by those in the group for that day, and the words that are the smallest may have just been said once. So it puts emphasis on the most used words as being the largest ones. Uh, we had our first meeting back on the 7th of April. I believe that's right, that was 7th of April. It was a Saturday. We had that at the fire station. And we had 42 individuals uh, at that gathering. Uh, that group consists of obviously our district administration. We had two board members present for that as well. Um, we had community members, community leaders, we had staff, and we had parents there. And really, we spent a lot of time. It was actually fun. It was. It was a. Yeah, it was a great day to get together. A lot of laughter, um, different ex exercises, really to try to get to. What are we most proud of? Where do we see ourselves? Um, and how do we see ourselves getting there? So what I have given you tonight is really the work that has been done. There's a very large packet with a, with a paper clip on it. Uh, that's kind of an, an update of the information of that day. So you will be able to review that and really kind of dig into the details that occurred on that day. I've also provided you with data that they have collected. Now the group has not seen this data yet. Um, we will be presenting some of this data, but I felt I wanted to give it to you so you could see the data that was generated from the focus groups. And then in addition, um, there is a, there's a one-page document uh, that our group met this Wednesday, uh, our, so yesterday, our, the cabinet uh, met to really try to take all the thoughts and ideas of the groups and really come up with a draft, uh, a draft of value statements. So we looked at the five groups, all created value statements. We went through those as a cabinet to identify what were those key points that we were hitting on. Um, so you'll see that we have four value statements that we have listed on there. We, each group created three, so we started with those three, and we've ended with four because we felt we needed to capture a fourth one. Then we went and looked at a, at a vision statement and a mission statement. And one of the things that we felt strongly about is really honoring what has been done in the past. Um, all of us agreed that our current sta uh, vision statement that we had was a really good one. Uh, and our mission statement tied pretty well to that, so we really kind of built those off of that. So it is, it is modified from our original, but it's, it really honors what we've done in the past because we feel like we're still doing a lot of that work. This is an ongoing process. We will be meeting next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday the 28th. That meeting will occur here in this room. Uh, again, it's another eight-hour day scheduled, and the last Saturday that we met, uh, we, I think we were there seven and a half hours, uh, almost the whole time. Um, so we anticipate that next Saturday will be another long day. The one sheet that has the vision, mission, and value statements, we will distribute that to all the, those 42 individuals um, to really start getting some feedback so that we can tweak it. Our group of eight that met or seven that met, uh, we spent a long time really kind of hashing out dip this word or that word, should we put a comma, we put a semicolon. Um, so we're very thankful that we were able to do that here without 42 people giving their input. So we will be gathering that next Saturday. Um, and I know I've said this before, but I just want to one more time commend Bobby Fiore. Uh, Bobby has been our 
glue in this process, keeping us on task and, and uh, snapping the whip from time to time. And uh, if we need something, typically you can just go ask Bobby and she'll be able to tell you where it's at. So I want to thank Bobby because her, without her leadership, we would not be where we're at today with this. So thank you, Bobby. Um, so with that, do you have any questions? But there's a lot of information in your hands. If you see something next week when you're reading through this and you have a question, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we'll be happy to work through that. Any questions or comments? Okay, well that concludes items for board discussion tonight. So we need a motion to second. Second. Discussion? No, no discussion on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering why they were doing a motion to second for board discussion. I was doing financial reports. That's why I stopped. I know we were like, concluded with board discussion. Okay. <laughs> but, Okay, so I need a motion to second financial. I need a motion to second to approve the March 2018 financial reports, 2018 donated items, and the fiscal year 18 amended certificate of estimated resources. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Any discussion at this time? No. Just a quick, just okay. a quick comment again, if yeah. I may. Okay, go. And I apologize. No, go ahead. Uh, Paul Penny, um, I'd like to certainly okay. congratulate you. Uh, if you look at the financial report, uh, less than 1% disparity in the actual financial figures that we have versus the estimated receipts and expenditures and expenses uh, that were set back originally prior to the beginning of the fiscal year. And if you look at the investment income in this day and age with what people are getting on their money, the investment income is absolutely phenomenal. So congratulations to everyone in the, in the operation. Thanks. I will share that with Mrs. Rucker. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Penny. <laughs> okay. Okay. Vote. Uh, Mrs. Arnold. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Hunt. Yes. Mr. Morrison. Yes. Mrs. Regano. Yes. And a motion passes. Warrant to do business. No one getting a motion is second to approve the employment, salary changes, leave of absence, terminations, job descriptions, approval of resolution and necessity to levy an emergency tax levy, approval of resolution, construction documents, and bid tabulation for the new parking lot of the elementary, approval of resolution to the construction documents for football field turf replacement and track resurfacing at Beaver Creek High School, Approval of athletic facilities construction and permanent bonds, series 2018, certificate of estimated life and maximum maturity, bond resolution, and county auditor's receipts for certificate copy of bond resolution, approval of non routine use of school buses, and approval of resolution opposing House Bill 512. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I would like to talk just about a few of these. First one, obviously item B is a big one. This is the resolution, it's our first step. The board must come, we must bring a resolution before the board twice in order to levy a tax. So this is uh, our first resolution moving towards a November tax levy of 6.33. Uh, item C is approval of resolution. Uh, this is the construction documents for the uh, parking lot, which is in a field right now by Maine. It was the house that we purchased last year. I would like to commend Mr. Thompson for the amount of work that he has done with SHP and uh, getting these documents together so that we can start not only addressing that corner, making it look nice for our community, but making it useful for our staff and families. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to item F, non-routine use of bus services. Uh, the higher vice code requires boards to approve the use of a bus when it is not going to be used for students. Uh, for normal routine purposes, this will be used, two buses will be used on May 6, which is the Owens Place fundraiser. Uh, down at Rotary Park. We will be transporting students or families uh, from the high school down to Rotary Park 
and we very clearly know that this event will raise money uh, for a park that will positively impact not only our families but our kids as well. So we're very excited to be a part of that. And finally, uh, item G is the resolution opposing House Bill 512. We brought that before the board last month for approval. So once this is approved, uh, we will move forward with sending this on to the state. That concludes my comments. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go. I apologize again. No. Why um, should you apologize? If, if, I, if I may, every one of these items is extremely important. Uh, but one thing I think I would certainly be remiss if I did not bring up at this point. Um, we've already heard regarding item D. We've already heard about the uh, turf which was installed in 2008. But what I don't know if everybody in this room knows was back in 2006, Miami Valley Hospital had left Beaver Creek off the list of school districts that were to receive funding to promote construction. And at that time, we had a board president, and her name was Peg Arnold, and she did not let, even though the funding was not there, she did not let that go by, but went and met with representatives, not only from Miami Valley Hospital, but with Kettering Network Hospital. And I don't want to say we played the two against each other, but I will say uh, that she was instrumental in helping us get Miami Valley Hospital to fund this project. So we need to make sure that Peg knows that and appreciates it. Yeah, so thank yeah. you. Morrison. Okay. It was a two-pronged affair. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, the vote. okay, Mrs. Arnold. Yes. Mr. Mrs. Hunt. Yes. Mr. Morrison. Yes. Mrs. Vergana. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Motion passes. Yep, thank you. Superintendent's report. Uh, each of you should have received in your email today, and I have a binder for the NEOLA policies. These are updates, so um, you are welcome to grab the binder if you would like to see it in paper, but you've also received it in your email this afternoon. Um, Mrs. Magnata sent that to you this afternoon, so you'll have that for the first reading, and we will bring that back next month for approval at our uh, May meeting. That concludes Superintendent's report. Okay, I'm going to announcements. Um, first parent summit, annual parent summit is going to be held April 23rd at Big Creek High School from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Um, next Board of Education meeting right here, May 17th. Play at graduation, class of 2018, May 19th at the Nutter Center, begins at 9 a.m. May 22nd, um, end of grading period, early dismissal for kids. And uh, May 23rd, staff work day, no school for the kids. Done, finished. It's amazing. It's hard to believe it's years old. I don't know where it went, but yeah. What? They fly, I know. Okay, we go on to more comments, so we'll fly right to you, Mr. Lerner. Well, this okay. has been an interesting meeting, um, full of excitement and wonderful kids, and um, I'm just glad that um, I'm here to watch them keep growing. It's astounding to me. Mr. Taylor. <clears throat> uh, a couple things. Uh, one, of course, uh, with our entertainment that we had here, Joanne and I uh, ended up at the Wright State uh, Symphony, uh, Symphony Orchestra and this group that was just totally amazing. Um, uh, the accolades that this group brings to our schools really represents uh, the kind of students we have, the kind of system that, that we have. I'm sure Joanne will have a lot more to say about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was really nice to uh, uh, see the winner of the debate team, uh, state champion. Uh, Rahul is one of my sixth graders. A very uh, curious uh, uh, sixth grader, bound for greatness, I would say. Uh, in fact, I developed a whole rule for him when, when he was in my classroom. So inquisitive. We, we had called it the Rahul rule. Three questions only. Why the Rahul? That's number one. <laughs> uh, also, the uh, Green County Career Center of the uh, Tate uh, Flight Initiative uh, is in process at this point. Uh, continuing to build a strong career uh, uh, 
education through the uh, through the Career Center. Very interesting uh, award to be on uh, compared to this one night and day in a lot of ways. Uh, but very interested in careers, moving people forward, and uh, the types of uh, vocations that we need in our in our culture. Uh, they will be putting a uh, levy on the ballot as well to build a new building. Uh, about uh, I think it's 1.03 million. So, yeah, I think it raised 62 million dollars with the 1.03 mil. So very um, interesting. Can I add on to Rose's story for you? Sure. He bought me greetings from Wright Patterson Air Force Base from about seven people that I know uh, that he's working with now because he sure. is in contracting out there. So he's going to okay. be. Uh, doing my thing. I think I'll be good there. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle. Thank yeah. you. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Secret success. This is hot. I really don't have much. Okay. Glad to see the school year coming to a close from the parent side. It's okay. always that point in the year when you reach that and you realize that you're you're ready for it to be done and summertime needs to come. And there are going to be more grades next year? Fifth and eighth. Wow. Last year, the middle of elementary. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're 18. And then they graduate. I don't know what happened. I mean, really, it's like, that's not supposed to happen, but okay. You're staying young. Oh, that's it. Yeah. John's got an older, but I haven't. Okay. That kind of works for me. Okay. I'll have to tell him that. Mr. Morrison, oh, and congratulations to new grandbaby. Yes, thank you. Okay, very pleased. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, I had the opportunity to see. Uh, 77 phenomenal young people that we inducted into the National Honor Society. Having one associated with the program, it was top notch. So, that's all. Okay. Um, it was interesting yesterday, I was asked to um, interview the kids with cross country scholarships. It is amazing when these kids walk in this third year, I've done this, and the maturity level on these. I'm not even going to say kids, young adults, just blows your mind. I mean, they come in, they are so well put together, they are so well versed. And all they just, and the one unifying thread with this group is they're a family and they're a coach. And I mean, I can, let's say, walk out and say, let me just start this for you because I don't know what to say, but it's just amazing or poor they have their coach and with each other and how they all just, all of them, sooner or later, end up in their speech telling us about, you know, how they've matured, how they've come out of their comfort zone because of this organization they belong to. So that just is a lot for these kids. And Coach Russ, I mean, they just cannot rave about him enough. So that's good to know. Um, went to see at Wright State, the thousand thousand kid band concert. Just part of the logistics of putting that together, I, right? I mean, you just, you're sitting there about the entire floor, about eight different bands. It just, you look at it and say, how do they do this? They sounded amazing. Those are our kids. And then last night, or two nights ago at the, um, at Wright State, Doctor, on one of the snow days this year, um, Chandra these kids chose to come in and rehearse. They had brought us, Dr. Spear is um, world known. He writes music, he's out coming, I mean, came in from Seattle. And he wrote this piece for Uno Voce, this group that formed tonight. This group sang the other night in Russian. They sang in Swahili, they sang in Indian. I mean, it just, these are seventh and eighth graders. You stood there, they had two standing ovations, like I said before. And you look at them, they performed with a professional orchestra. That made you cry. You just could not believe what they were doing. And the maturity level of them up there, I mean, they represented this district, you have to say. You are so proud to see them up there. And Sean Hurley, amazing teacher, what he's done with these kids. I mean, these were like college level, the way they performed. Even Dr. Spiri had said, I spoke to him that day, and we had lunch together, we were, kids were there, and we had to all sit together, and he was saying, this is hard to believe, this piece I wrote, 
is really for college level and above, he said, and these kids have taken it and run with it. So I understand this piece they played tonight, they learned in less than two weeks. Now that's, I mean, really, in another language? Okay, so this was an incredible night, and um, you're right, the National Art Society was moving lots of kids, so we should be proud of our teachers and kids in this district. I know we all are, because they are the best. I know other school districts say, but what do they know? Really, we are the best. Just putting it out there, so let everybody know. Beaver Creek. We are Beaver Creek. So thank all the teachers out there, thank the kids, and thank the administration here tonight for all you have done in this strategic planning. I know the work you've all put in, Bobby, thank you. I mean, Darren, everyone in here, thank you for all the work you have done because it's a lot of work. Those eight hours, I'm thinking they've got to piece this together. Good luck. I was glad it was them and not me. So thank you for that. And with that, um, we're going to a motion second to take us into executive session. No action will be taken following the executive session. We're going in the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of public employees. Policy 121.22 G1. So moved. Okay. Thanks, everybody.